Welcome to hypoproliferative anemias, anemia due to lead intoxication. We have the following take-home points. With exposure, lead accumulates in blood, soft tissues, and bones. Anemia due to lead intoxication is normochromic and normocytic, with basophilic stippling on the peripheral blood film. Management involves education, exposure removal, toxicology referral, and chelation therapy. Sources of lead in the environment include lead-based paints that remain in older buildings, cigarette smoke, including second and third hand exposures, drinking water through leaching from lead-containing pipes in the plumbing of older buildings, lead-glazed food containers that contaminate water, food, and beverages, and lead battery manufacturing and recycling plants that contaminate their surrounding environment. Lead is absorbed into the body through the lungs, gastrointestinal tract, and to a lesser extent, the skin. The respiratory tract is the most significant route of absorption in adults, and the gastrointestinal tract the predominant route of absorption in children. After absorption, lead is distributed to the blood and soft tissues, including the brain, liver, and kidneys. Lead is also distributed in the bones, where it is found in the bone marrow. Bones contain up to 95% of the body's burden of lead, with a half-life of decades. Lead levels greater than 30 micrograms per deciliter inhibit enzymes of hemoglobin synthesis. When blood lead levels exceed 80 micrograms per deciliter, franconemia develops. Lead inhibits enzymes involved in hemoglobin synthesis, including delta aminolabulinic acid dehydratase and ferrochelatase. Inhibition of ferrochelatase inhibits the insertion of iron into the porphyrin ring and leads to creation of free erythrocyte protoporphyrin, FEP, and zinc protoporphyrin, ZPP, when zinc is inserted instead of iron. Lead causes increased red cell membrane fragility, which leads to a shortened red cell lifespan and resultant hemolysis. Lead accumulation in the proximal tubule of the kidney leads to lower levels of erythropoietin. Lead also inhibits pyrimidine 5' nucleotidase, causing degradation of red cell ribosomal RNA that can manifest on the peripheral blood smear as basophilic stippling. The anemia due to lead intoxication is normocytic and normochromic, and the peripheral blood film might show basophilic stippling. Lead poisoning often presents with nonspecific signs and symptoms, including anemia, nonspecific abdominal pain, headaches, difficulty concentrating, memory impairment, abnormal gait and coordination, tremor, and muscle weakness especially of extensor muscle groups. Although rarely present, there may be a lead line at the gum tooth interface, which is a bluish gingival pigmentation due to reaction of lead with bacteria in dental plaque that causes formation of lead sulfide. Diagnosis is made based on the exposure history, blood lead levels, and erythrocyte protoporphyrin levels which are typically assayed as zinc protoporphyrin levels. All patients with elevated blood lead levels greater than 5 micrograms per deciliter should undergo education regarding lead-related health risks and exposure reduction. If levels remain greater than 20, the patient should be removed from working with or around lead. Where levels are greater than 40, Patients should be referred to a specialist in occupational and environmental medicine or medical toxicology. When levels are greater than 80, lead chelation therapy is recommended. In summary, lead accumulates in blood, soft tissues, and bones. The anemia of lead poisoning is normocytic and normochromic with, with basophilic stippling on the peripheral blood film. Management involves education, exposure removal, toxicology referral, and chelation therapy. 
This ends our video on hypoproliferative anemias, anemia due to lead intoxication.